next guest is with us until about 40 after. And he's going to come back on in the summer when his new book, The Dark Side of the Force, comes out. Much of what he knows he can't tell us because of national security, but he's got some a little bit of new info he can reveal here today. We're going to talk about a host of issues, the underwear bomber, the body scanners, the police state, 9-11, how he was gagged for being able to talk to the public about what he knew, how he was persecuted. Uh, he's Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer, of course, of Able Danger fame. You've seen him on television many, many times, uh, and he is with us again for the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, Colonel Schaefer, it's great to have you here with us. Well, thanks. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Well, I'm I'm uh, glad that we got in touch with each other. Uh, there, there's so much going on, and I could go over your bio, but for those that may not know who you are, recap who you are and, 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 and your experience uh, with trying to stop 9-11 and then your persecution. Right. Well, to put it all in kind of a nutshell, I'm a, a case officer by trade, trained by CIA years ago, <laughs> a lot of years ago. Uh, my primary job uh, with the Department of Defense was to conduct uh, human intelligence operations, uh, that uh, which the public co commonly knows as espionage. Uh, I did that for about uh, 20 years, and uh, my specialty was uh, special operations support, direct support to special operations. So while I, I wasn't necessarily a Green Beret, I, I spent a lot of time with them, supporting them, and, and then doing things in, in what's known as the, the, uh, the black the black world, the black operations world. Um, and, of course, uh, within the context of that, I, I did a lot of it both as a DI, a, a, an Army civilian, uh, as an Air Force civilian, and also as a Defense Intelligence Agency civilian. Uh, all along, I was an Army reservist, and a lot of the stuff I would do and, and still continue to do is as an Army reservist. Uh, and so the, uh, uh, the, the primary focus of, of all of that work, uh, frankly, was going after hard targets, going after the, the real challenges of the country, uh, the North Koreans, the Iranians. Um, I did a lot of work on uh, on things like counter-drug back when we were actually focusing on counter-drug back in the 90s. And it all kind of culminated in the late 90s, uh, at least uh, from my perspective, in a, in a project called Able Danger. And an Able Danger was uh, essentially a, a, a an entrepreneurial Concept come up uh, that, that was that was brought up by uh, General uh, General Hugh Shelton, who was uh, the, then Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, who tasked uh, General Schoomaker, the then Commander of Special Operations Command, to bring together a group to to really do out of the box thinking, to take a, a, a clean sheet of, uh, of of paper, if you will, and try to see what would be possible to go after a transnational. Uh, and what we mean by transnational is, a, is a, 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 something that does not fit in one single country, a transnational threat, which back then was the, the then blossoming threat of al Qaeda. Uh, and it was uh, very innovative. Uh, we, we, we tried to put together a hybrid team of folks from uh, defense intelligence, which was my element, uh, something called Stratus Ivy. We were a special mission task force, along with uh, uh, technology and uh, support of the Army, Army Land Information Warfare Activity, which was doing some very advanced uh, data mining which was uh, then being funded uh, by uh, Representative Kurt Weldon. Uh, there was a great interest in, by Congress to try to actually do some things with new technology, uh, all, all on behalf of the Special Operations Command, who had the charter, who was tasked by General Shelton and, and General Schoomaker, to try to find ways to go after al-Qaeda. And again, it's notable here, Alex, that this was all pre-9-11. This was all done 98, 2000. Uh, and it was a uh, very advanced for the time data mining effort that was the uh, a lot of people don't understand that was just one part of it. Uh, the actual components, the larger uh, moving pieces, if you will, were never really brought to light during uh, during the able danger hearings and everything else. And, and I'm, I will talk about that a little bit more in the book when the book comes out. Uh, right now, it's going to uh, review, so I, you know, I'm not sure what's going to make it through completely. But but the idea here you're having to get for those that don't know national security view uh, overview and 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 a release authorization from what the Department of Defense CIA. Oh, no, from Army. Army, uh, since I'm an Army body and I was actually on, uh, on active duty with the Army during the time that, uh, that I was uh, conducting the operations in Afghanistan. And this, this book is going to focus primarily on Afghanistan, the dark side of the force. And it, it has to do with my work there, uh, working uh, as part of Task Force uh, 180 and Task Force 121. I was actually uh, attached to 121, which is General, Sco General uh, McChrystal's command in Afghanistan back in 03 and 04. And it, it, it goes into a fairly good detail about how we were, we were doing things. And, and, and frankly, uh, we're, we're portraying it clearly as the tipping point in Afghanistan. We, we've uh, been able to, a lot of the folks I worked with have, have collaborated. 
I was assigned to something called the Leadership Targeting Cell, the LTC. Uh, we had good cooperation, excellent cooperation from my, my, my colleagues on that. Uh, and so we've uh, we've been able to kind of go through and, and detail. Uh, it, it, it's kind of an action adventure in that it, it, I think the readers will like it by the fact I, I try to tell it in the first person, much like uh, the Martin Sheen character, the Captain Willard character in Apocalypse Now. It's almost, uh, and you can probably appreciate this from your perspective, Alex, the, the insanity of seeing bureaucracy in action. And um, th- th- a large part of the focus is kind of give people a, a feel for what it was like to have to deal with not only the enemies that are shooting at you, but your own enemies uh, who are behind the wire who just really don't want to do the right thing. And, and, and so we try to portray this fairly, and it'll be, fo- it'll be focused primarily on my work in Afghanistan. But- well, we're going to talk about that one, and I'm looking really yeah. forward to a full-hour interview with you when the dark side of the force uh, comes out and uh, you know find out who the Emperor Palpatine is in this story. But expanding, you then tried to tell the 9-11 Commission and Congress this info, and then they began to persecute you. Why right. was that? Well, it's, it's, it's interesting how it all kind of popped up. The book will only talk about the initial disclosure, and it, it, it'll end kind of uh, with me being pulled off the front line after my second deployment to Afghanistan. But uh, my initial disclosure came to directly to Dr. Philip Zelikow, who was the then chair of the 9-11 Commission. And uh, what I just told you and your audience is what I told him, but in, a, in about an hour's worth of briefing where I lay out all the bones of the operation. I, I lay out everything from uh, who was involved, what was the focus. I talked about some clandestine operations which were related to it, which we were using to support the, 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 the targeting effort. And, my, and, and, of course, one of the things which drew total silence and shock when I brought it up was the fact that we discovered three of the uh, – the 9-11 hijacker cells. We, we discovered three of the four cells of the 9-11 uh, attacks. And it was, you know, total shock and dismay by the people in the room, to include Dr. Zelikow. Uh, and then during that initial disclosure, uh, he pulls me aside at the end of that meeting and at Bagram. This happened in October of 03. And uh, gives me his card and says, what you said today, and I'm going to quote as, 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 as accurately as I remember, and I think this is, is directly from my testimony, what you said today is very important. We need to continue this dialogue. I need you to contact me upon your return to the United States. Uh, and and at, at which time I explained to him, well, you know, I'm going to be, I'm actually undercover here, so I'm going to have to give, you know, my, my real name is something else. I will, you know, contact your staff when I get back. And it was during that time between October and, and February and, and January, frankly, something happened. And, and, and to me, there's still a mystery of what exactly happened. But sure enough, I followed up, contacted his staff. And um, all of a sudden, they don't want to talk to me, even though what I said there, that Bagram, uh, they were very, very shocked, very interested. And I was told after talking to the, his staff twice, uh, I'll get a quote as, as accurate as I remember it, uh, we don't need you to come in. We, we have all the information on able danger that we need, unquote. And, and that's kind of when uh, things started going wrong, and I really didn't know why. Next thing I know, my, my clearance is suspended, and I'm, I'm pulled off the front line, despite the fact I received the Bronze Star, uh, was sent back a second time to plan a, a surge operation for uh, another surge to go after bin Laden. And it was uh, I was pulled off over what can only be uh, constitute, what, what, what can only be described as, as petty issues, uh, and I'll, I'll go through them briefly. Well, well, I mean, hold on before you do that, Colonel Schaefer. We also have uh, Farmer, one of the head lawyers for the commission, saying there was a cover-up going on within the commission. Oh, yeah. We see them persecuting you. We see them, I mean, tell us what happened to you in the persecution, but then what do you think about Sybil Edmonds' testimony that she was listening to communiques where elements of the CIA were communicating with al-Qaeda and the Taliban and knew about their movements thanks to the intel you and others were gathering, right up until the moment of 9-11. Well, I, I, I tend to believe that there's a, a great deal of truth to that, and, I, and then there's, there's a couple things I want to add to that uh, to, to back up your point. First, when I was in closed hearings, uh, when I was getting ready to go into closed hearings on the Hill back in 2000, I'm, I'm going fast forward here a little bit, but in 2006 when I was in closed hearings, uh, Representative Sylvester Reyes himself comes up to me, and he, as you know, Sylvester Reyes is now, I believe, the chair of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. And Representative Reyes comes up and, and says, uh, Colonel, uh, Colonel Schaefer, um, I know there's something to what you're saying because Dr. Zelikow came and approached me in January of 2006 and told, and told uh, I'm sorry, 2004 and said, uh, there's something called able danger. We think it's promising. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to you on that. And frankly, they never got back to him. So this is 
one of the senior Democrats coming to me and saying, they told us about it, but then they never followed up. And so I do believe something happened internally. And I've talked to a couple of the 9-11 Commission folks. I, I can't go on a lot of detail. They've asked me to not give out their names. But uh, frankly, one of the 9-11 Commissioners told me personally everybody was covering for someone within that commission. That is to say that everybody who was a commissioner had an agenda. And but what about Sybil Edmonds saying she was decoding the FBI slash NSA recordings uh, out of, uh, you know, the foreign language, uh, out yeah. of Arabic, and she's sitting there listening to it, and it is elements of, in, of, of Western intelligence interfacing, and we know that uh, Dr. Uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski brags in two books he wrote that they got the Arab Legion together out of other Muslim extremist groups and that they were interfacing with it right up until the attacks. 